Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Flavor and Fiction. So this week's category is a traveling memoir, and I chose All God's Children Need Traveling Shoes by Maya Angelou, which I'll put here. And uh, after the end of her marriage, she decides to go live in Africa for a while, and she ends up in Ghana. And so because of that, the recipe we're going to be making, I wanted to find something from Ghana, but honestly, most of the dishes called for so many spices and ingredients, and I just, I kind of decided to find something simpler to make, but still from Ghana, but it's uh, fried rice, Ghana style, I guess. So that's what we'll be making today. So in 1962, like I said, it's the end of her marriage. She and her son Guy decide to move to Liberia. Um, but they stop in Ghana first just to have a little vacation. And on the third day there, her son ends up getting in a horrible car accident and where his life is literally hanging in the balance. And uh, so of course she ends up missing out on the job in Liberia that she had set up and she has to find a new life in Ghana because she can't leave her her son's side. Uh, so that's how she ended up in Ghana. Um, but I guess everything worked out for the best in, in the long run. Okay, first thing you want to do is heat up some water and throw in a vegetable bouillon cube. And this is the water you're going to make your rice in. So at this point, Maya is kind of wallowing in self-pity. Uh, her son has a broken neck, among other things, and she doesn't know what to do with herself. So uh, she decides to stay at the local YMCA while she figures it out. And that turns out to be where a lot of um, American returnees are staying. And uh, with the help of some friends, including uh, Julian Mayfield, uh, if you don't know him, he was a civil rights activist an actor, writer, director, everything. Um, he helps kind of shake her back into reality. And um, so she picks herself up, she gets a job, she um, made two really good friends at the YMCA and they end up de um, deciding to buy a house together. And that house becomes like the meeting place for the other American returnees who are back to Africa for their own reasons. So after her son fully recovers, which was fairly quickly, um, he ended up going to college and she got a clerical job in that same college. Um, and she also ended up helping a colleague there produce all the school plays. Uh, but she knew that she was not making enough money. So she had to, she looked for work at a local broadcasting office, but she was met with like an unfriendly receptionist there, which caused her, the experience left her thinking about how Africans perceive African Americans coming back to the continent to live. And she, she thought that it would be kind of like an open arms, and it was in some areas, and it was, was for some people, but not everyone felt the same way. So Maya met a lot of interesting people while in Ghana, uh, including a tribal king that she became very good friends with who, you know, championed for her and tried to find her a better job. Um, and a wealthy man, her dating life was not boring. Um, she dated a very wealthy man that she really started to feel a connection with, but he wanted her to be his second wife. And, you know, while he was courting her, she liked the relationship. But when he started talking about marriage and he tried to put her under his thumb a little bit, she was like, nope, this is not for me. Um, so before we go any further, let's get started. Um, I already have the rice cooked right now. Um, and we're just going to saute the vegetables. It's a really easy recipe. Okay, we got our rice chilling over here. And... Over here, we're going to saute our vegetables, so just pour in a little oil. I've already cut up the vegetables. Uh, we have some cabbage, some carrots, 
peppers, and onion. Just jump all that in there. And we're gonna saute for a couple of minutes. So Maya was in Ghana at the time when the March on Washington was happening. And she and the other returnees wished that they could be there to participate. So in order to do what they could, where they were, they decided to organize a march across Accra and to protest on the steps of the American embassy. So that was a really big deal. And it just so happened that it was the very same night that W.E.B. Du Bois passed away in Ghana. One of the biggest things that happened to her was meeting Malcolm X. At this point, Malcolm X was trying to uh, garner support from different nations so that he could um, he would be granted a meeting with the UN so that he could present the plight of black Americans. Uh, so he came to Ghana and he spent time um, with a lot of different groups in Ghana, even got to meet the president and, and Maya Angelou was very influential in him meeting the president, um, Kwame Nkrumah, by the way. She ended up being his chauffeur and his guide around town. So she got to have a lot of private conversations with him um, about personal issues as well as political issues. Um, and they, be, they had a mutual respect for each other. Although at one point he did chew her out a little bit because uh, she was a little critical of W.E.B. Du Bois's widow organizing a meeting for Malcolm with the president on the last day of his visit. They had been trying so hard the entire time to get him this visit. And she kind of swept in and was like, I'll make it happen because they were close friends. Um, and when she let her criticism be known, Malcolm kind of snapped on her and was like, you know, hello, her husband just died. She has a lot going on. Um, he just kind of put her in her place and she ended up getting upset, but it, it led to a, um, a mutual respect. So let me go check on these vegetables. Okay, veggies got a little brown. I think it's time to go ahead and add the egg. All right. It called for two eggs, but you know what? I'm watching my cholesterol, so we're just going to use one in here. Now all you got to do is put the rice in the veggies. Okay, rice is in, and it looks and smells good. And it's already basically done. You're just putting this in to rewarm the rice and get everything together. So, it's done. Ooh. So, it was during this time that Maya ended up uh, growing further apart from her son, Guy, who she had always been very close to because it was just the two of them growing up. She had him when she was very young and um, they had been very close. But now he was starting to push away. He started dating a much older woman and she let him know how she felt about that. Um, so he kind of said, you know, I need to live my own life. So she took the opportunity to get some space. She ended up accepting an offer to... Uh, revive a play in Europe with uh, Cicely Tyson, James Earl Jones, and, and more. Um, and while in uh, Germany, while they were performing in Germany, she made the acquaintance of a German couple who seemed very pleased to see her and they invited her for dinner and said, you know, bring a friend. So she ended up bringing along a Jewish friend that she had just met. And it was a very interesting encounter because uh, you know, this wasn't that far after the Holocaust. And so there was still a lot of tension, um, understandably so. And so it was a very interaction at the house. And I'm not going to ruin it because I think, I think you guys should read it and let me know what you think about it. Just to give you a little hint, it turns out that the couple had a ulterior motive for inviting her to their home. But she also had a few instances while in Ghana where, where people thought they recognized her like oh she looks like so-and-so and, and in fact one, one woman uh, thought that it was someone uh, her great-great ancestor who had been 
taking taken to America um, as a slave and that she looked just like her. And that kind of made her feel like, well, maybe this could be where I come from since I look exactly like this woman. The woman took her around the village to show people, look, look at her, look at her. And everyone felt the same, like, oh my God, like you have to be one of us. And the whole book is pretty much her, um, her journey with self versus her journey with Africa and how it's a give and take like any relationship and how in one, one moment she could feel so far away and then in the other moment she's embraced so completely. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much what I took from the book. Um, her and, and any, you know, no one can word it like Maya Angelou. And uh, she completed her time in Ghana before going back to America. She never thought that she would go back to America. She thought that maybe she'd move to Europe or somewhere else in Africa. She had not considered going back to America because of everything she had been through. But then she received word from Malcolm X and he wanted her to come head up one of the offices of the organization of Afro Unity. And she just could not turn him down um, after the the friendship and the bond that they had created. Um, so she took him up on the offer and uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much where she leaves off. But uh, I really recommend this book. It was, I, it, you know, I've, I've been to Ghana once. Uh, it was only for like a, a 10 day trip and I would love to go back uh, for a year like she did. I feel like at some point, every African American thinks about their connection to Africa and what could have been, what would have been, and uh, it wants to experience sort of what Maya experienced. Uh, so definitely read this book, uh, Happy Black History Month, <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna go taste this fried rice now. It better be good. All right, here I go. Let me make sure I get a little bit of everything on the fork. All right. Mmm. That's really good. It's always the simple dishes that taste the best. Well, Ghana, you're all right with me. I think tonight I'm gonna get a rotisserie chicken to eat with this. <laughs> but this is actually very good, very tasty. So before I finish eating all this, I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Flavor and Fiction. And I will see you next week. Thank you.